can't sit here and say that I have a strong opinion on the over or the under as far as the win total goes. They're just, they're rebuilding. They're rebuilding. And yes, Gino's in the middle, but yeah, McDonald and Schneider clearly see that they have work to do in the trenches on both sides of the ball. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're not going for the flashy draft pick, uh, free agent signing. They're really working on the core of this team. That That's how I'm viewing it, as San Francisco is dominating things. And they're hoping that Smith and Jigba takes that next step, and they expect Metcalf to be the dude. Now, Gino, he's probably going to be somewhere in between 2022 mm-hmm. and 2023 in 2024. I think you take that if you're the Seahawks. Yeah. You're in the middle of a, of a, like you said, a, a rebuild, retool, whatever you want to call it, whatever, you know, whatever descriptive word you want to use, reword you want to use for what they're doing, retooling, uh, uh, rebuilding. The Seahawks are, yeah, they're in transition, right? So you're in a conference, though, where you can do that and still win nine games maybe and sneak into a wild card spot, which is actually why I think the schedule for them is arranged the way it is because you look at Green Bay, you look at Chicago, maybe, you look at the Rams, certainly three of those final four games. Those are the teams they're battling with for position, for wild card position. Those are the teams they're battling with for the sixth or seventh seed in the NFC. Maybe not Green Bay as much. They should perform a little bit better, but certainly – the Bears we've talked about as a possibility, 8-9 win team. Uh, the Rams, an 8-9 or nine win team. Those are the teams they're battling with. So, yeah, the league is saying, no, we don't think you have a shot to win the division. Because they don't. Because the Niners are in that division. And we do think you're going to be right there battling for a playoff spot in the last couple of weeks. Which, again, if the number is 7.5, slightly juiced to the over, I think that's dead on. Like, this is, a, this is an 8-win team, probably. So, all of that stacks up and makes sense. I have concerns about the offensive coordinator. I really yeah. do. This could be a big mess. When you haven't dealt with NFL players before, when it, it now he's a lifer. We're talking about Ryan Grubb. He's the OC. He was the OC slash assistant head coach at, for the Washington Huskies last year. Also coached quarterbacks, do a little bit of everything there. And I, I respect the grind and his climb. Because before that, he had a a bunch of jobs at Fresno State. Prior to that, Eastern Washington. A decade ago, he was wrapping up his tenure at Sioux Falls. You know, he started South Dakota State after coaching high school for a number of years. I respect the climb and what he's accomplished, and now he's made the big show as an offensive coordinator. But not dealing with NFL players before, I wonder how that's going to go with some of the egos that you do have on this team, DK Metcalf and Geno Smith. And, you know, that's going to be really fascinating to watch from the outside. Now, I hope he does well. I just find it really interesting because you did hire a defensive-minded coach, and he's getting the keys. Take it over, go run it, do your thing. And how much help is he going to have there? Probably not much. So, Another, maybe it's a J.J. Reddick thing where it's going to go one of two ways. Slightly retooled offensive line. Another year of experience yep. for Jackson Smith and Jigba. 3450 doesn't seem unrealistic for Geno Smith unless you expect him to continue yeah. to decline from last year, right? Like that, in 21 and a half touchdowns. Uh, just a ba- that probably a touchdown or two too high for me, but the passing yards I think should be there. He, he missed two games last year and he cleared this number. Yeah, Gino Smith sh- should beat this number. I I don't think there's any question about it. The touchdowns he did not clear. I think that one's mm-hmm. a question. So one year you have thirty, the next year you have twenty. My guess would be over because I'm saying somewhere in the middle, but not something that I would bet. I would rather bet the yardage if I'm doing any anything. DK Metcalf, 10-25. 10-25. Last year, he cleared that number, got over 1,100 yards. Um, on the touchdowns, we're at 7.5. That's right on the number from where he was last year. If this is right. truly Lockett's last year with this team, I would expect that he takes a step back. He was at 894 a year ago. Uh, The number is anywhere between 700 and 800. And Smith and Jigba, you're expecting him to take a big step up. And he played in every game last year, had 628. 
they're setting that number at 775, four and a half touchdowns. I would go over on the touchdowns with JSN. Yeah, I would probably go over on the yards as well. Um, 93 targets, but only 63 catches. I think he's going to be up, you know, as Jason Sukanik pointed out when we had him on a couple minutes ago, if this is the last year of Tyler Lockett, you're going to see continued growth from Jackson Smith and Jigba. Then I think we're talking about somebody in the 80 catch range. And if he's averaging 10 yards a catch, if, even if he's only averaging 10 yards a catch as he did last year, then we're talking about 800 yards receiving. And I agree, he becomes more involved in the red zone as well. So four touchdowns last year, beating that four and a half number. I like both of the overs on JSN. I think Seattle's roster is, it's solid. I think it's, I think it's slightly better than middle of the road. Um, I would say it's, you know, somewhere if we're, if we're talking 14, 12 to 14, they're kind of like the, the Geno Smith of NFL teams. They're a solid yeah. team. In the last two years, they've been nine and eight. And they have some big wins. Like, if you're dismissing, I mean, they had a big win last year against Detroit. And you look at their loss, and they beat Cleveland. Um, and you look at their losses, with the exception of the Ravens' loss, which was just, you know, an absolute pounding. Most of those losses were very, very close games. And it's been this way the last two years. So I, I just look at this roster overall, and I say, I don't think there's a ton of weaknesses. I think that's actually easier for me to look at. Like, if I say, like, where the weakness is at linebacking core. But you look at strengths. I think, you know, Geno Smith is a good quarterback. I don't know why we keep – I just think I, I always call it draft bias. Like, it's the Brock Purdy thing, right? If Brock Purdy was a second-round pick, we talk about him like he's truly, truly elite. But, you know, he came from an undrafted spot, so we can never give him credit. Geno Smith is a journeyman quarterback. He's kind of like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Like, how many years did Ryan Fitzpatrick play solid football before we were like – well, he's, he's just, he's a good quarterback. Is he elite? No, but he's solid. So I think Gino's good. I think the receiving core is elite. I think the two tackles when healthy are solid. I think both running backs solid, but is any of that group outside of, of the receiving core elite? No. And then on the defensive side of the ball, secondary, very good. I think there's a lot of depth defensive line. It's solid. I don't know if there's an elite, elite guy up front, but a solid group. And then I think you look at the linebacker, and that's where the question mark comes. So strength of the team, I guess the strength of the team just comes from a balanced roster and that there's just not a lot I can point to outside of maybe the interior of the offensive line and the linebacking core. I'd say that is a major issue, which is why last couple of years, nine and eight, borderline playoff team, and what's the you, you, what, seven and a half win total? I mean, that's mm -hmm. I, I think there's some value there, but I think that's why people are looking at this. And when you look at the Seahawks roster, it's the definition of eh, it's okay. 